All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will thank you. We thank you, we praise you, we ask for your help and your forgiveness. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the topic of our khutbah for today is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we are in perpetual danger. Something very dangerous sitting down somewhere is coming towards us. And the only way out is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah is saying. That's what Allah is telling us. And this is exactly what we're going to dance around today when we're talking. But Allah has want to build hope in us. For the past two or three months, we've been talking about Jahannam. We've been talking about the hellfire. We've been talking about when you do this, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to the channel. But stay, Allah want me to come today and our, our Imam to come build hope in our brothers. Whatsoever evil you're doing, don't never you give up. That's what we're trying to say too. But the, the condition, the precondition of that is you have to return to Allah. That is what we're going to say today. We we'll make stories, we we'll say verses, we we'll say chapters of the Quran. But this is exactly what we're going to do. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Uh, one of the earliest revelations of the Quran, early chapter, chapter we call it in Arabic, we call it Surah. One of the early Surah of Makkah, Surah al Makki, is Surah called Surah al Zariyat. Uh, surah al Zariyat, if you want to go and check, you know, want to Google it or you want to go check there, is Quran chapter 51. That's why we call Surah Al Zariyat. Uh, what is Surah Al Zariyat is talking about? Surah Al Zariyat in Al Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Surah Al Zariyat mentioned the stories of the prophets, the messengers that passed before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah has said so many things about Hud, Ad, you know, Saleh, and so on so forth, and. Allah also warned us about the final day, that is the judgment day. He warned us. Whatever you're doing, Allah is telling us, be very careful. If yesterday your job is to backbite, is your job is yesterday is your job was to do people, you know, crop people and take their money from them. If yesterday what all you were doing is to take the people money from them unlawfully. All stealing, all making people to divorce, and so on so forth. If this is what you will have in pleasure in, Allah is telling us, all of us, that we have to be careful because there is a day is coming that is very dangerous day. It's called Yom Al Qiyam. That's one of the things the Surah Zariyah is talking about. And thirdly, after Allah has warned us about the final day, He warned us again about accountability. If you do bad, you should think that there is accountability waiting for me. One day, one day, I will stand in front of Allah, and Allah will judge me. What you are doing? How you manage to get your money? The, the knowledge you get, the education you get, how you use it? The money you get, how you get it? How you spend it? And so on so far. And nobody will be there to be interpreter. You will be standing in front of Almighty Allah. Allah will be talking to you directly. So you should know there is something called accountability. If you're working for an institution, company, and your duty is to be a financial, the person with charge of the money and so on and so forth, you will make sure every cent spent, you give account to it. Oh yes, I took this one, I transport myself, I buy the gas, I bought food for my people, and so on and so forth. That's what I call accountability. Do the same thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what I call accountability. And towards the end of the surah, Surah Zariyah, there is a powerful verses of the Quran that what that will be the subject of our discussion. That will be the subject of our kutba for today. What is that verse? Allah has said, "Fafiru ilallah." Fafiru 
إلى الله is is a verse that the scholars of tafsir, ulama of tafsir, commented on and translated to us. What that mean? Fathiru إلى الله. It means in English, so flee to Allah, run away to Allah. There is. Let me just give you a simple, simple example. Where we were coming from, World War II country, you live in some part of the city, and people tell you, oh, there is a rebel attack this area. So what you will do? You, whatever belonging you're able to take with you, you will take it and you will run from the area. Because that place is not safe for you no more. That's the civic example Allah is telling us. Run to Allah. If you were do something evil yesterday, run and go to him. Say, Allah, please forgive me. You know, I was doing something wrong. Please forgive me. So Allah will accept your forgiveness. Allah will whatever repent it. Allah will take it from you. Then you will be saved. But if you say, oh man, I'm not going nowhere. Whatever they're talking, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Every day they're talking about this thing. I don't care. So you're going to get a penalty that is not good for you. <clears throat> That's why we call for fear in Allah. But war farrah in Arabic language. When somebody says farrah. Farrah is an Arabic word. Means that someone was frightened. Somebody was fright, real, real frightened. Okay, and he knew he was in danger, but he wanted to escape and moved himself to a place of safety. All that one is in that one word. That one make Arabic language is one of the richest language ever. That one word, Farrah. Farrah is three words actually, two, three alphabet. Farrah, but when they make shit that on top of it, they make farrah, so it becomes one word. And that one word interpretation is when someone was frightened, somebody was scared, and that person knew that he was in danger, but he wanted to escape, he wanted to run and leave this place and go to a city. Why most of us here, particularly those who coming from world to country, because we feel that the countries we coming from is no longer safe. So what we did, what we did, we found any kind of means and come over here because we feel this country, this wonderful America is a place of safety. That's why we are here. So warfare in Arabic, that is the meaning of that. And this warfare is the same message of the messengers. The, that's the meaning that uh, uh, St. Now Musa alayhi salam or Moses, when he returned to Fir'aun, Sayyidina Musa's story, we don't want to go there because it wouldn't occupy the whole entire Qutba. But Sayyidina Musa ran away from Fir'aun. And he went. And then he came back to Fir'aun. The God came to Fir'aun and told him, Oh, the Musa that you raised here, he was a baby, he is here. So Fir'aun said, Come on. When he came, Fir'aun looked at him. Then, don't, then didn't you run away from me? What brought you here back? And say now Musa know this is the king, this is the man that blood hanging on his hand. He can kill for come on. Say now Musa say, Fafarrar to me kun lama kiftuhum. Fa wahabali rabbi hukman wa jalani min al mursalim. Fafarrar to me kun, that's the evidence we want to show here. Fafarrar to me kun, I run away from you, Pharaoh. I run away from you when I scare you. That's why I run away from you, because my life was not saved no more. That was called Farrar. Say now Musa used that, so they use Farah right there. Allah is telling us in general that we all of us today in this era, in this ending of the world, and we are in perpetual danger. We are in very dangerous situation. And the only way out is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a simple matter. Allah who created us. Allah who created the whole universe. Allah from, the, from, from Adam all the way to Prophet Muhammad up to now. He is the one when the sun coming from east and go set in the west. It's Allah that doing that. Allah is making you we sleep with a woman and produce a baby. It is Allah that doing that. Allah is making you to catch, to, to breathe and catch this air. It is Allah that doing that. That's seeing Allah telling you that you are in danger. So the only way you can get out that danger is to return to Allah. Whatever you were doing yesterday, after the khutbah today, you go home and say, oh, you know what? The Imam was preaching today. 